This video is sponsored by PokeTownStore.com, the place for all your Pokemon TCG online needs. They have code cards from a huge variety of sets, so definitely check it out, PokeTownStore.com. Also, if you use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG, you get 5% of your next order. How cool is that? Releases are about to start, it's time for us to talk about which card is the best of the bunch. Let's take a part, the set, and talk about the top tier chart. Station V, yes, yeah, kind of OP, it yeah, draws scars and KOs you see. Or how about some strategies? Quick ball for the damage, cleverly. Acceleration is everywhere, from metal sources to frost mud. Yeah, which type is better? I know you care. A certain weakness makes me kinda scared. Sniping with some ups to goons will feel like an epic looking typhoon. Wiping the board, it'll be so soon. That Sable IV will smack you to the moon. Yeah! Episode 243, Sword and Shield, Top 20 Best Cards, let's go! What's up YouTube, it's ZadnoyStCG here and welcome back to another video on my channel. If you like the Pokemon trading card game and anything related about the subject, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon TCG content on a weekly basis and also clicking the little notification bell will make things a whole heap easier for you to just uh, see when a new video is live on the channel. Also, if you enjoy what you see, be sure to mouse the like button and let me know in the comment section what your favorite card from the new Sword and Shield set is. Without further ado, let's get this video started. Uh, in this video, we're going to tackle the uh, issue of actually uh, ranking the top 20 best cards of the set. It's a difficult thing to do, but this is uh, my personal opinion, and I'm actually going to give every uh, card a little bit of an explanation on why I think this is ranked on that specific spot. We have a couple of honorable mentions before we get the show on the road, and uh, those are Lapras V and V Max. I do think they're very great. Definitely paired with frost mod to accelerate some energies but the reason why they're not in the top 20 is that because they have a, a nasty weakness to lightning and with Picaram getting more popularity after ever since we saw the Japanese results yeah but Picaram is gonna get more uh, yeah played in the Western world as well so uh, definitely get yourself uh, ready for some Picaram action so uh, Lapras is not counted in this list because of the weakness could get better in the future but Picaram is not going anywhere then we have Snorlax V and V Max I think the damage output is a little bit on the low side definitely thinking about the fact that we have Z V, which is not one shot up thanks to the attack of Snorlax V Max. It could change in the future, but we still have Metal Frying Pan, so it makes things a whole heap uh, difficult for like the Snorlax to one hit KO. So I'm not putting it on the list, although it could become better. It is uh, acceleratable thanks to like Welder or uh, Malamar, uh, Psychic Recharge, or whatever. But I'm not putting it in this list because of the reason that it is not putting off too much, too much damage. Although having so much HP is definitely a great thing to have. I don't think it's gonna be uh, seeing too much play, although I could be wrong entirely. Maybe you're watching this in the future and you say, like, you don't know anything. But this is my personal top 20. And also another card is Air Balloon. Uh, getting the retreat cost reduced by two my, uh, does seem like a nice deal, but um, let me just get this straight. If you're playing a Jirachi engine, you're still uh, hang on to the escape board and the switching card. So that's why I think Air Balloon is not uh, necessarily a top 20 best card of the set. So that's why it's not included. Although a combination with Darwin's Necrozma GX from the Ultra Prism set could be a nice thing to have free retreat in the days of like Caldeo, EX and Floatstone. If you like that uh, mechanic, having free retreat every time, that might be for you. But now let's get the show in the row with number 20. That's going to be Big Amulet or Giant Charm or whatever it's gonna be pronounced in the uh, English set. This is a, a simple tool card that states the Pokemon this card uh, is attached to has 30 more HP. 30 more HP could be huge. We've seen it before with things like uh, Metal Frying Pan. Fighting Fury Belt is also a nice uh, yeah, um, reminiscing card that also gives the effect of extra HP. Extra HP is nice. Will make sure that uh, you have more survivability. Will be uh, tanky for instance. So those decks that rely on having more HP could even use this. Uh, things like Wobbuffet V for instance. Not that Wobbuffet V is the perfect card. But uh, getting more damage counters on yourself could help out. And having 30 extra HP. I don't know how this uh, works here. But you can just equip this to an ADP. And so Suddenly out of nowhere, you have 310 HP, which means that even if they use Family Zard, Mew to Mew, uh, using that attack, bam, you are even, not even one hit KO. So that's how huge this card is. Could see play. Next up, number 19. That's going to be Lucky Egg. A blast from the past, Lucky Egg. Uh, when the time this was legal in the past, it was not that good. But now, it will become better. Why is that? Well, we have cards like Reset Stamp, which ruins the day of everyone playing a Greens Exploration deck. I used to play like Baby Blast Aphelon. Uh, definitely, I love that deck, but uh, it is so weak against Reset Stamp. And this could actually help out that little deck. So, uh, Lucky Egg states, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, Draw cards until you have seven in the hand. 
At the point of recording this video, we don't have a lot of options. We don't have field blower, so blowing away those tools is going to be difficult. We do have Lysander Labs and Faba, which could get rid of the tool cards. But uh, then again, not a lot of decks run the combination of those two cards. So if the Lucky Axe sticks, they're gonna if, if they knock out the Blade Blacephalon, that's insane for uh, with three energies. Well, if they knock it out, we draw cards until we have seven in the hand. If they uh, Gust around it, they leave uh, a t an active threat uh, with three energies attached. So uh, it is a good thing for a lot of those decks that rely on a Green's Exploration Engine or maybe other decks in general that are so weak against Reset Stamp. Well, Lucky Act can save the day. That's why it's here on the number 19. Number 18, more Peko V. More Peko V is an interesting card because it is reminding us of. Uh, yeah, dull stall decks. Uh, it has the hit and run uh, attack here. First of all, his first attack smacks 30, actually 20 damage to the active and 20 damage to one of the opponent's bench Pokemon. So it's a little bit like a jet punch, but on a lower power level. Although with Electro Power, you can boost that damage up. Let's say you use uh, Electro Power, you spark once, that's 50 damage. Well, in the late game, if you smack 50 damage on a Jirachi, you can sw finish that off in the late game with a simple spark. Yeah, as a little example, uh, but the, the uh, card that this card is good for, actually the attack this card is known for, is for the electric wheel, smacking 150 damage, and you have to discard an energy attached to this Pokemon, then switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Why is this good? First of all, we have a recycle energy, which means you can use the attack, get recycle energy back in the hand, and you can loop the strategy. Second, we have Lily's Pokedoll in our format, so that is the perfect candidate to just promote after you use electric wheel, promote a Lily's uh, Pokedoll, and if they cannot have gusting cards in the hand, let's say they don't run custom catcher they only run great catcher we are a pokemon v which means this is a new mechanic great catcher does not work on us and that means uh, we are safe for gusting effects that means if they don't run things like uh, nine tails with the temp nine temptations we are per perfectly safe and now we can just promote a doll and we're good not only that, this is a dull stall deck. We can also promote Pokemon that cannot get hit by a GX. For instance, you can play with Caldeo. You use the attack, promote Caldeo, and you're done. Although, uh, if you're running Caldeo, also try out Air Balloon. That will help you out with the retreat. But this is a very nice way, a hit and run deck. You can power the damage up with Electra Powers. And uh, yeah, even have a more Paco V Max. And that more Paco V Max is not even uh, too great, in my opinion. But. Having the more Paco V can, uh, it's a nice way to buff your HP to 300. You could run the memory energy, that is a way you can uh, go with the electric wheel, but the better uh, play here is uh, getting this V Max in the late game and just destroying the opponent because this attack smacks uh, 180 damage and with electric power you can get some huge numbers. Also, the, the attack that more Paco V does, this smacks 20 damage to each of the opponent's bench Pokemon. So, with little sparks here and there, you actually might have a great way to just sweep up some weak basics on the bench. Okay, next up, number 17 is a very interesting card. It is a, a power down muscle band. Muscle band was huge back in the days of XY. Now we have vital band. This, uh, the Pokemon attacks uh, that uh, this, actually let's just state it like this. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to, dish out 10 damage against your opponent's active Pokemon. So only 10 damage. In the TCG, I learned a lot that drawing cards is good, but dealing extra damage is also good. We've seen all cards work like that. Fighting Fury Belt, Muscle Belt, uh, Expert Belt, from even... What was the other effect here? Choice uh, choice Band. So a lot of these extra uh, damage buffs were amazing. Even in the days of uh, base set, plus power was also good. So dealing that additional 10 damage, as a little example, let's say we are playing Reshizard and uh, we smack Flare Strike for 230. Ah, dang it. The Picaram is not knocked out. Well, with this simple tool card, we can just knock out a Picaram and get that 240 damage we always desired. In the past, we used things like Fighting Dojo and a Fighting Energy, or even Shrine of Punishment that even uh, damages itself. Well, this is an ideal way to buff the damage up even further. So with Vital Band and even with uh, the upcoming cards we're going to talk about, it's going to be an ideal way. It will see play. Mark my words. That's only on the number 17 spot because dealing additional 10 damage, you have lots of ways to do that. So I'm putting it here on 17. Could be entirely different in certain decks, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Next up is Ndidi V. Ndidi V is a Psychic type, but as we've known with the rule change, the Psychic types are now weak to Darkness. So if you are up against, let's say, a Mew Mew and you want to hit for weakness, this is your guy. Ndidi V has the attack Psychic, dishing out 10 damage plus uh, 60 more for the amount of energy attached to the opponent's active. So let's say a Mew Mew has uh, 3 energies. For instance, they want to copy an attack that requires 3 energies. Well, if they have 3 energies, you actually smack the insane number of uh, 190 damage. And that's with the weakness, it has automatically exploded. And uh, you can even go with Vital Band and only are requiring 2 energies that the opponent has. But Psychic is a good attack, but it's not only in here for the attack. It has the Watch Over ability. This ability reminds me of the Shaman, 
I think the one from Lost Thunder, if I'm not uh, mistaken, to heal damage. But this is uh, insane. Uh, once during your turn, you may heal 20 damage from your active Pokemon. This means if you get four of these NDDVs out, which is very easy to do because of the number one card on my list. I'm not going to say any spoilers, but <laughs> yeah, you, uh, good professional players already know what I'm talking about, but it's just so obvious. So NDDV, what can you do about this card? Well, you get a couple of them out and you can create a stall archetype. You can heal 80 damage as a maximum uh, of your active and uh, with cards like Hyper Potion, I believe, also thrown in this list. Or actually in the card, not in this list, but uh, in this pool, uh, card pool. We'll make sure you have a healing deck, which is very, very nice indeed. So uh, indeed, I think it's, uh, it's going to see play and some weird archetype where you have to heal 20 damage. As another example, the opponent has a Mimikyu, they have Shrine, and your Mew Mew suddenly has no ability. Well, easy way, search out your NDDV from your deck, smack it down, and heal that damage. And out of nowhere, you can even search it out with Mysterious Treasure, so that's how good it is. Out of nowhere, you can still use your Mew Mew, so I think it's a very great card. Next up, another V card, Chapu Coco V. Every Picaron deck will run this because we are so afraid of Mega Lupani and Jigglypuff ruining our day because we have Picaron in play, we have Zerora in play, we have Danny in play and suddenly they one hit KO us. Well, we want to have another Pokemon to accelerate energies to. Definitely we're gonna rely on the Dene, Electromagnetic Radar is just so busted in the Lightning deck. So we have Picaron, we have the Dene, and that's why, where it stops. We don't want to get out more GXs or otherwise Mega Lupani and Jigglypuff ruins our day completely. So what and can we do? We can get a Tapu Koko V. It has free retreat and ideal starter. So having it this with a free retreat is fantastic. That means you can automatically switch to a Jirachi. You can switch to whatever you please. And out of nowhere, it even has an attack. Smacking 20 damage and also draws two cards. So it is a very consistent card. Has free retreat and even has the Thunderbolt attack. Smacking 200 damage. 200 damage might not seem like a lot, but if you compare that with three Electro Powers out of nowhere, you can smack 290 and even get the one hit KO on certain tag teams or maybe uh, Pokemon Vs. So uh, this is a card you cannot sleep on. I think it's great in every Picaron deck as a one-off. Next up, we are going to have Cramorant V. If I can uh, actually find it here. Cramorant V. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, normal type Pokemon. I just have to figure out where we can find it. It smacks 160 damage to a uh, bench Pokemon, but I, yeah, I found it over there. One, two, three. Yeah, here we have it. Uh, Cramorant V. This is a normal type, 200 HP, quite sweet. Has a one retreat cost, amazing with things like a skateboard, and it is consistent because its first attack can actually get you two uh, cards uh, from the deck immediately. Search your deck for two cards and put them in the hand. We'll make sure you can get the combo pieces that you desperately need. So starting with it is not bad. Not only that, for three colorless energies, you can uh, discard all energies attached to Cramorant V, and then smack 160 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It can also be the active, so uh, 160 for three energies, very great, considering the fact we have Welder, we have Malamar, we have even the Rillaboo, if you want to try that out, even though I don't think it will see that much play. You have lots of ways to accelerate energies, and this card will definitely be a game-winning card. Out of nowhere, getting this out of the deck and uh, finishing off a Pokemon, or just uh, the better thing it is, sniping the Dene GX. The Dene GX has 160 HP, a lot of decks will rely on it thanks to the first turn, no supporter rule, and that's where Kramer and V will shine. You can just uh, punish the opponent. If they smack down at the Dene, you know in the late game, somewhere you will get two prize cards. So that's how good it is, and we'll definitely see a lot of play. Next up is Sinchino. This is a card that reminds us of Zoroark. It has the exact same ability, and uh, that means once during our turn, we can discard a card from the hand and then draw two cards. Also, its attack smacks 40 damage and you can accelerate a basic energy from the discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. At first glance, this might seem like an amazing Pokemon. Why is it not higher up on the list? First of all, Zoroark was much more tanky and it also has a righteous beating for a simple attachment in the days of the DCE. You can actually smack uh, a significant amount of damage and that is actually putting up some pressure. This card, on the other hand, no pressure at all. We also have Zubstrika, we also have Pidgeotto. This is similar to those cards and uh, the bad thing about the card like this is that it does not have a lot of HP. Cross Division is weak against that a lot. We have Spell Tag. Oh, I don't uh, get this, but Spell Tag damage on the Chinchino will definitely kill you. Uh, we have uh, other sniping capabilities, so uh, in the form of the um, Obstagoons, which I'm going to talk about later in this video. So it is a great ability, don't get me wrong, it will see play, but not in a whole heap of decks that we saw with Zoroark, because Zoroark was also an attacker and it was tanky, it could survive a hit. This time around, this guy uh, is so weak against sniping damage and with so many sniping decks coming back in the format, I don't think it will be higher up on the list. Next up, number 12, it's gonna be Victini V. I do think that this card is amazing. 
The bad news is it has a two retreat cost. I would have loved if it was only one retreat cost, but Victini V has its room and any fire deck. Remember Gardevoir GX with its attack, 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to both uh, active Pokemon. Well, that's what the attack of Victini V is, the second attack. Energy burst, that's the exact same wording. 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to uh, this Pokemon and the defending Pokemon. So let's say, for instance, a Mewtwo has, no, a better way. You have a Zacian V. It has three energies. Three energies. That's its uh, requirement to attack. Well, simple thing. We use Welder. Simple Welder. Two energies onto this Victini V. And suddenly, out of nowhere, that's 60. Uh, that's 120, 150 damage. Out of nowhere. Because uh, they have five energies in total between both Pokemon. So that's 150 times the weakness. My, times two. Bam. Out of nowhere, Zacian V destroyed. Thanks to a simple Welder. You only need two energies to knock this guy out. And that's going to be fantastic. So Victini V has a great role. Also against those decks that require a lot of energies, uh, you can just two-shot and uh, you can even go overboard, welder attach pass, welder attach and then out of nowhere this energy burst can go crazy. Uh, not only that, it has spread flame, the first attack. For regardless energy, attach up to three fire energies from your discard pile to the Pokemon in any way you like. So uh, this is very similar uh, to the effect of like a uh, Volcanion. With, of course, the... I think the Volcanion... What was it? The one that accelerates energy from the deck. But this accelerates from the discard pile. And with a card like Magnolia, Professor's Research in the format, getting energies in the discard pile is very easy. And that means uh, this uh, can actually get this going on the first turn. And going second, you can use uh, the Spread Flame and get some energies onto your bench. So you don't even have to rely on Welder every time. You can use uh, Spread Flame and Welder if you go second. It's insane. So 15 EV, uh, kind of like uh, one of my favorite cards for any fire deck out there. Next up, Upstagoon family. This is the Galarian Zigzagoon family. I'm putting here Galarian Zigzagoon. When you smack it down from your hand on the bench, you may uh, put one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon. We see this actually see a lot of play in the form of Zacian V. Zacian V smacks 230 damage. With the Galarian Zigzagoon, you can get it to 240. With a, maybe an ADP effect of Altered Creation, you get to 270 and even one hit KO. A Mew Mew. So uh, yeah, that one damage counter is already significant, but there's gonna be a whole heap of um, uh, sniping capabilities with Galarian Zigzagoon. That's why I'm kind of cheating a bit. We're also throwing Sableye V into the mix here. First of all, we're also gonna check out Galarian Obstagoon. This is the stage two version, so you might want to run some rare candies up in this place. And this is, has an, also an ability, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, put three damage counters onto your opponent's Pokemon. So pretty much like the Crobat line, or the Greninja GX line, if that sounds more familiar. You can actually get this up and rolling. You just smack a lot of damage around the field. This also goes through the ability of Mew. Mew only bl uh, blocks the damage done to us, not the damage done to uh, actually putting damage counters thanks to ability. So the Mew does not block this from a broken boss. Just uh, notice uh, down on the paper somewhere so you don't forget. But let's say we can get a couple of these guys out. The Obstagoons and Zigzagoons and we snipe a lot of damage. Well, then Sableye V gets to its maximum potential of dishing out a ton of damage. Uh, the second attack of Sableye V states it dishes out 10 damage plus 60 more for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. Let's do some quick maths. Let's say we have 4 damage counters on the opponent's Picaron. 4 damage counters means we are actually hitting uh, 250 damage. That is actually way more than we need. Let's say they have 3 damage counters on them. Let's see if that is enough. That's uh, 60. That is uh, 120, 180, uh, plus the 10 is 190. They have 3 damage counters. That's not enough. You need 4 damage counters. So you can do some math, but this can uh, add up very quickly. 1 uh, Zigzagoon on the bench. 1 uh, up Galarian Upstagoon. Boof, out of nowhere, there's 4 damage counters on the opponent's Pokemon. And then you can go crazy with this mad nail attack. The second attack of the Sable IV. If you can get more damage up, just spread around a little bit with your Upstagoons. And uh, then finish the deal with Sable IV. It does need 2 Darkness energies, but... There's a way we can maybe use uh, Darkrai, Prism Star, smacking it down two energies and then use Energy Switch, that is an option. Or uh, yeah, just manual attach pass and just snipe a little bit until you're ready. Because Pokemon Vs are not uh, yeah easy to target. The only way you can do that is with uh, Pokemon Catcher, which is uh, requires a coin flip, and uh, the Custom Catchers, which requires two of them in the same hand. So not only that, Sable IV has an amazing first attack. Put a trainer card from your discard pile in your hand. We might also see some stall decks getting Crushing Hammer back in the hand, using it again with Will, and yeah, getting trainers back in the hand has always been good uh, of the days of Junk Arm. So I'm not gonna say it. Item Finder, you know how it works. So Sable very nice card. 
That was on the uh, number 11 spot. I put the entire Obstagoon line and Sable line in the same category, since they are great darkness types with spreading. Next up, we are heading into the top 10. I, then I do believe these are actually gonna see a huge amount of play. So that's why this is my top 10. Are you guys ready before this? Let's drink a little bit of water because I have so much to say and I'm so excited. All right, let's go. Number 10. I'm giving this to Evolution Incense. This is a simple item card and actually replaces uh, the um, Evo Soda completely. Evo Soda is still legal in Expanded, I believe. So I don't play Expanded, but still. Evolution Incense is an item card stating, search your deck for an Evolution card, reveal it, put it in your hand. Ooh, how amazing is that? Let's say you're playing, let's say I, I am at the World Championships like last year. I'm playing a very strange counter deck with Frostlass, an Aerodactyl. Uh, what else was in the deck? A lot of like deck cards. Lucario GX for instance, so I'm playing all these cards. Well, with Evolution Incense, this deck would have been so much more amazing. Too bad I had like a 5-3 record at Worlds, but still, that deck was very funny because I countered the entire meta, and you use Evolution Incense to find your uh, evolutions. Now this will be fantastic. You can search for whatever you want, just play a ditto, play Evolution Incense, and you can choose on a huge variety. So this is a fantastic way as a consistency booster because we, we struggled. We didn't have Ultra Ball. We didn't have Nas Ball. We had to like rely on Pokemon Fan Club and Communication to get our Pokemon up and rolling. So uh, yeah, Rogue Dex will become so much better thanks to Evolution Incense. I love it so much. Definitely considering the fact that Pokemon Vs are typically like basics and uh, also the uh, GXs were also basic. So what do we see? Uh, like most of them, the tag teams were basic. So what do we see? That Evolutions just got uh, put down in the dust and uh, they've got they forgotten about Evolutions and now they're back. Evolution Incense, get your rare candies, get everything up and rolling and get your stage twos up or maybe your uh, stage ones. It's gonna be fantastic trying this out. Evolution Incense, my number 10 spot. Okay, next up. Normal rod or fishing rod or whatever it's pronounced. I'm putting this on the number nine spot Recovery has always been a crucial key in the TCG. Remember the days of a rescue stretcher I over abused that card so much even play like four copies in my Gorgas deck at one point at the regionals and uh, Where was it again? Uh, Sheffield <laughs> very amazing. So yeah recovery is good this time around uh, We can shuffle two Pokemon and up to two basic energies from the discard pile into your deck So basically it's like Brock's grid uh, mini this is an item card, which is awesome. So we can use normal rod, then use a supporter and draw this out. So it's gonna be fantastic getting your Pokemon back. Typically you have a lot of one-offs, definitely in like things like Malamar, you run one of these um, Mimikyu's maybe, you run uh, maybe a Dust or Trevenant, you actually run uh, a Baby Blacephalon Psychic version. Well, sometimes you have Acrobike and two of them are in, the, in that Acrobike and say like, oh, there's no way of getting the back. Well, you had, of course, uh, the other rod, which can get back a Pokemon and a special, actually a tool card. But this time around, it's better. Getting two Pokemon back and two basic energies. So uh, it states up to two basic energies. So you could say like, I'm only getting one Pokemon. I'm only getting uh, a Pokemon and one energy. So you can have full control. Normal rod is going to be so great as a recovery card. Next up is Frozma. Why is this card in the list and Lapras is not? Well, first of all, Lapras has a terrible weakness. Weakness to lightning. Just... Yeah, very bad in the, in the meta where Picaram is going to be very good. Frozma uh, not only has a, a better weakness, it also has the most uh, terrifying ability ever. Remember Rain Dance? Well, it's on the stage one. You don't need your rare candies. Getting this up and rolling is fantastic. So what you do, get this up. It's a stage one. Maybe Evolution Incense could help. Dance of the, a the Ice and Snow is an ability as often as we like. During our turn, we can attach a water energy from the hand to one of our bench water type Pokemon. What does this mean? Well, we have lots of uh, ways you can go about this. Definitely a Jirachi based engine should be perfect because we run switches on a skateboard. You can promote Jirachi after a knockout. Use Frost mode and boom, get your energies in play. Lapras V Max has a great damage output but has a terrible weakness. That's why uh, Frostmod is not higher up on the list. Uh, this will definitely be great at one point where there is a fantastic card out there that requires water energies. Then we're gonna grab to our Frostmod. Very easy to establish. It's just a stage one. And then we have energy acceleration on our bench water type Pokemon. Remember Aqua Patch? Screw Aqua Patch. We don't need that anymore. We have a stage one Frostmod which can get a lot of energies in play. Maybe some people will try out a Quagsire Frostmod deck so you have like energies in play and you can move them around to wherever you please although that is not even necessary at this point because uh, with Quagsire you can move them to the active but uh, if you have a Pokemon on the bench you can accelerate to them immediately so 
what can we do about this? Maybe uh, a Mewtwo version with Frostmoth playing a lot of water type attackers. I could see that happening. But uh, yeah, as often as I learned to one of your bench water type Pokemon, this is uh, very troublesome. So Mewtwo is not a water type, so scratch that idea. So there's definitely an idea out there where Frostmoth will be insane. And uh, yeah, if we, as soon as we get more water type Pokemon that are not weak to lightning, we will be in a better spot. Uh, although uh, these have a terrible weakness, either you're weak to metal or you're weak to lightning. So water is not in the best position in the battle right now, but Frostmoth does have a perfect ability. So that's why I'm putting it here on the number eight spot. Next up. Probably one, if not one of my favorite, if not the favorite card of me from uh, this set is Oranguru. Oranguru of the Days of Sun and Moon base has been fantastic in struck drawing cards. This time around, Oranguru is back with the consistency boosting attack, actually not attack, effect. Ability here, once during our turn, we may swap one card from a hand with the top card of our deck. What does this mean? Well, uh, there's also a supporter in here which is card your entire hand and draw 7. So Sycamore slash Juniper is back in the form of uh, Professor's Research, aka Magnolia. So we have that am amazing supporter. Not only that, we have the Denny. How many times did you say like, oh, I have to the Denny away a custom catcher? I wish I didn't do that. Well, now there's a good way. You get your Oranguru in play. It's a nice, uh, yeah, bench shitter right here because at some point you're definitely gonna use it. You use the ability, not only can you dig deeper into your deck to find that yeah puzzle piece that you want but you can save resources let's say you smack down the Dene but before you smack down the Dene you use this ability to put a custom catcher back on top of the deck so you don't throw away it so you can smack down the Dene and even immediately draw that custom catcher so the chance of you getting two custom catchers will be insanely high another effect here is that uh, you want to save like rare candies or uh, other resources that you desperately don't want to discard that's why Oranguru is good not only that let's say you use a supporter and the Dene and you just whiff on that single one card while well, you have an extra card you can dig deeper thanks to this ability of Oranguru. Very great card, swapping card from the hand with the card on the top of the deck. Very, very fantastic. Now, the top six very insane cards are still coming. Uh, listen up, folks. Here is Aurora Energy. Wow. Remember Rainbow Energy? Well, it saw play and a huge, a lot, yeah, and a huge amount of decks because it can be so versatile. Mewtwo desperately will need that energy to get any attack going, although more special energies in play will mean that certain Pokemon get better. Let's say the Giratina that smacks you that you smack down to discard a special energy will be better. Fabas will be more powerful. But that effect is uh yeah, just forget about it because Aurora Energy is desperate, yeah, desperately a card that Mewtwo wants. It states in order to attach this energy to one of your Pokemon, you have to discard a card from the hand. Uh, while in play, this card provides every type of energy, but only provides one energy at a time. So basically, it's like rainbow energy, but instead of putting one damage counter on your Pokemon, you have to discard a card from the hand. Why is this uh, an issue? It isn't, because so many cards work uh, in synergy with this. Let's say you use Aurora Energy, get your Solgaleo GX in the discard pile, thanks to the effect, attach it to Mewtwo, and use a Welder onto it, and out of nowhere, you can use Turbo Strike because you have the effect of discarding and now you have a rainbow energy kind of style. So that means Mewtwo no longer needs to put one damage counter on itself with rainbow energy. With Aurora energy, Mewtwo can use attacks from any uh, GX in the discard pile or in play and that's going to be very, very easy to use because it uh, works as any type of energy. So you no longer need like uh, water energies in your deck. Maybe you're still playing Viridian Forest, but this will make it a whole heap easier for your Mew Mew deck and could even work in other decks to just play tech cards. Now you can play four rainbow energies and four aurora energies. I have like a, a, a let's say a one prize uh, weird deck with baby buzzwall and other <laughs> one prize attackers out of nowhere. It could work, so a very amazing energy nevertheless. Next up is Metal Sorcerer or Metal Patch, whatever is gonna be the name uh, when it uh, gets translated. Very amazing. Attach a metal energy from the discard pile to one of our bench metal Pokemon. We've seen it before with Dark Patch, over abused card. We've seen it before with Aqua Patch, also saw a whole a lot of play. So Metal Sorcerer, I do predict, is, we'll see the same results, but even better because Metal is getting such a huge boost in the form of Metal Sorcerer, but also with Zacian V, which I'm gonna talk about later in this video, that Metal will be put on the map. We have Metal Frying Pan to get rid of the weakness, so Metal has now the perfect package to just be the top archetype in the game. Next up! Marnie, remember Pika Judge, remember the card Judge in general, remember Marshadow from Shining Legends. Yeah, me too. Getting down to a hand size of four desperately, actually, it really sucks. You cannot do anything unless you draw out of that, it's very difficult. So, Marnie is exactly that effect. You uh, throw away your judges, these cards are better. Marnie states both players put their cards face down and uh, shuffle them uh, them on the bottom of the deck. Okay, so you put your hand down, shuffle it, and put them on the bottom of the deck. So not only can you not access or redraw those cards, 
you draw fresh cards, which is fantastic. So as soon as both players done that, you draw five cards, the opponent draws four. The opponent has uh, been just, yeah, this is a very disruptive card because let's, if he uses on the first turn going second, out of nowhere, the opponent only has four cards in the hand. That's going to be so crazy to think about. And uh, not only that, if it also works out as like, say, oh, I want some custom catchers. This hand does not have some custom catchers. You play Marnie. All of the cards that don't, do not contain custom catcher are on the bottom of the deck and you draw five new ones. So that's why I like this card. It's uh, going to be seeing a lot of play. Marnie is definitely one of my favorite cards as well. Then Zation V. The top dock in town. Everybody's talking about this card. I'm only putting it on the number uh, three spot because I do think two cards are better in this set. Stick around for to see which one is number one and which one is number two. Okay, Zation V. What can I say? It has the most broken ability in the game. Once during your turn, you may look at the top three cards of your deck, attach any number of metal energies you find there to this Pokemon, and put the other cards also in your hand. If you use this ability, your turn ends. This is perfect if you go first. Because uh, on the first turn, you cannot even attack anyhow. And uh, it draws you cards. And uh, typically in a format, when you're on the first turn going first, uh, you cannot use supporters. This will help to establish a hand. You can use that even at a time where the opponent says, Ah, reset stamp. Ha, ah, stamp 2-2-1. Two, two, well, sometimes you just say like, Oh, fine, draw for turn. And then use the ability to draw three more cards. And out of nowhere, you have a five card hand. Drawing the turn, you have six. You lose one turn with the reset stamp. But as Zation V is such a broken, has such a broken ability. Not only that. Three energies it requires to smack 230 damage with cards like Metal Sorcerer in the format to accelerate energies and even its own ability getting 230 on the second turn is like easy, easy as pie. And this can even go crazy. Combine this with ADP, which we've seen uh, working out in Japan, you can get, of course, an extra 30 damage thanks to Ultra Creation Jacks. And, of course, with some thick cards like Galarian um, Zigzagoon or maybe the Vital Band we talked about, you can smack 270, no problems asked. Uh, the only uh, setback is that the turn after this, you cannot attack with this Pokemon. But whenever has that stopped us? We saw Lapras GX. We saw Boswell Jacks, all those cards. Let's just say Smackdown Switch, retreat your Jirachi uh, uh, with the skateboard and bam, out of nowhere, you smack the damage again. So Station V will see a huge amount of play, mark my words. Now, number two, Professor's Research, aka Sycamore, aka Juniper, aka throw away your hand and draw seven cards. That is so amazing. How many decks, remember the days of like uh, XY and stuff where you play 4N and 4 Sycamore? Well, now we might see a return of that format with uh, s uh, four po Professor's Research and four Marnie. Those are just so, so uh, amazing as supporters that I do think that's going to be the case. Professor's Research is going to dig into your deck. Some decks will not love Professor's Research, but most of them will because we have the Fishing Rod, getting back resources and getting things in the discard will help out a ton of decks. Think about Mew Mew, you just can use all the attacks of the GX in your discard pile. Think about Malamar, you can just put energies in the discard pile to reaccelerate with Psychic Research. So fantastic with Professor's Research. Not only that, you can use Professor's Research, throw away all of your fire energies, use Fire Crystal to get them back, or use Victini uh, Prism Star to just poof, infinity out of nowhere. So Professor's Research, such a broken card. We'll see. It's going to be the, uh, the face of the new format. A lot of decks will run for Professor's Research. And now, my number one pick. It is... Can you guess it already? It is Quick Ball. That's right. Do you remember Ultra Ball? And the fuss about Ultra Ball that every deck should have for, uh, for Ultra Ball. Well... We're going to go back to, the day, to those days because finding your Pokemon has always been missing lately. And definitely, like, we had, of course, the rotation just before Walls and everyone's like, Oh no, I cannot find my Pokemon anymore. Where's my Ultra Ball? Where's my Nest Ball? Well, Quick Ball, in, in uh, first instance, is better. Nest Ball just puts your basic immediately on the bench, which was okay, I guess. But Quick Ball is the same, but uh, you can put it to the hand. So the thing you have to do, you can, you can only play this card if you discard one other card from your hand. So yeah, you play this card, discard maybe Psychic Energy, and search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it in the hand. Why is this so busted? Ultra Ball sub plan, you have to discard two cards. Now you only need to discard one card, and you can search for the Dene GX, and you can even use the abilities that come into play. So Quick Ball, think about a lot of uh, things that come into play. You can find all your basics. That is good. Uh, you can set up your bench. Let's say you're playing Malamar, you're playing four Quick Ball, four Treasure, and uh, you can immediately set up a bunch of in case. 
you are playing a deck that runs for quick ball well you can uh, search for quick ball um thanks to jirachi jirachi finding quick ball quick ball out of nowhere to denny and out of nowhere you have an entire setup so i do think this card will see a whole heap of play that's my number one pick spot right now i want to know what you guys think about the sword of shield cards which is your favorite card from this new set i want to know let me know down below and if you enjoyed this video be sure to mouse the like button and also subscribe for more pokemon tcg content on a weekly basis and i will see you guys in the next video thanks again for watching have a nice day peace out